Today, I'm gonna to break down five different monetization strategies for your mobile and desktop applications and show you how to implement them, why you might wanna consider it, and also the downsides, so tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James, and right here on my YouTube channel, I come out with new developer videos every single week. So that's something you're interested in. Be sure to give this video a like if you like it at any time. That helps out the channel a whole bunch. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Now today, I'm gonna to be talking about app monetization. How do you make that sweet, sweet money so you can keep developing your applications? It's something that's super duper important. Uh, I develop a lot of applications in my side over the holidays, and I do it for fun because I love it and they're apps that I want, but also it'd be nice to kind of get rewarded for the time I'm putting into it with a few dollars so I can go buy some tacos um, from Chipotle. Not a, not a sponsor at all. Um, but, but on seriousness, monetize, monetizing your application is super important, and there's five different ways to do it. Um, beyond the things that you would think about, like putting in ads. We're not gonna talk about ads today. We're gonna instead talk about APIs through iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows that you can use when you ship your app to the App Store. So let's go ahead and break down the first one, which is paid applications. All right, paid applications are the easiest thing to implement because there's nothing to implement. <laughs> That's right. There's really no difference between a free app and a paid app besides the setting that you set in the app store. When you set a free app to be free, it is free. People download it and they get access to it. When it's a paid app, it's paid. They have to pay money to be able to download it. It's just like, you know, buying an apple when you go to the grocery store or buying some good, you know, or this hat. I bought this hat and now it's good forever and I own it and it's there. Unless I lose my phone or I lose my account, I'm gonna have that hat forever. And that's a paid app. It's really, really simple. You can change the price of your application at any time to be more, to be less. Um, and the nice part there is that if you introduce the price at $4.99, raised it later, if someone already bought it, they're not gonna really see the price again. So it's not gonna you know, really be upset them at all. Um, and you can of course make it lower too. You can run flash sales, you can schedule sales, they're there. Like I said, there's nothing to implement in your application. Some people may want to do receipt validation. This is in any of the processes which validate it, which is a whole bunch of work, which I'm not going to go into detail of, but you can basically validate that someone actually bought this through the App Store APIs. Now, the downsides of paid applications is that they only buy it once and that's it. It's paid and that's it. You sort of in perpetuity always are giving them free support, free updates and adding new features. And that's really up to you. I'm a big fan of one-time paid applications. Some of my favorite applications from my buddy Frank, like iCircuit and Continuous are that way. I get an awesome application that Frank supports. And I just have to give him some money up front. That's how I buy a lot of my software that's out there. But that's not the only way that we can actually make money because number two is non-consumables. Non-consumables, the opposite of consumables. So let's break these down. Non-consumables are sort of when you don't want to have a paid app, but you do want to have a one-time upgrade in your application. Uh, you can think of a non-consumable as something that you don't consume. So you don't use it up, basically. It's good forever. It is a lifetime unlimited access to that thing. Okay. So for example, in my app, my cadence, I have a pro mode non-consumable. It's a few dollars. And when you purchase that, you get pro mode and all of its features forever on any of your devices on your account. So as long as you're logged in, you can restore, you can unsubscribe or delete the application, reinstall the application, use it this year, use it next year. You've purchased it once. It's good forever. Now in the logic here for this is actually relatively simple with the non-consumables because they bought it and then they own it. It never goes away. You don't have to check to see if they have any of them. You don't have to check to see um, if it's expired. It's a non-consumable. It's literally the easiest in-app purchase that's available there. The downside, just like paid applications, they only got to buy it once. That's it. That's it. They can only buy it once and that's it. So once they've purchased it, it's good for them forever. 
and you don't get to make any more money, which is good and bad based on what you want to do. Pro perks, of course, is that they could install your application, get some level uh, of access to the application, and then upgrade if they so desire, which is a nice approach too. All right, number three, the opposite of non-consumables, consumables. All right, consumables are, like I said, literally the opposite of consum non-consumables. So consumables are things that you consume that run out that you can buy multiple times. This is very simple. If you're building a game or played a game ever, you've seen these all the time when you buy coins. You buy some coins, you buy some Pokeballs. Basically, you buy some stuff and you can buy it again and you get more of it. So consumables, like I said, are something that you can buy over and over and over again. You can think of it as a, um, it's not a subscription because you buy it and you get it right away. And once you use it, it's gone. Um, and then you'd want to buy it again, for example, over and over again. So non or consumables themselves are good uh, when you probably have a game of some sort or there's some currency in your application that you want to use. This is a good freemium model. Um, same with non-consumables that you may want to look at. So even Apple uses the, the analogy of gems or coins that you may want to buy frequently over and over again. Now, the downsides to this, not really that many, to be honest with you, unless it doesn't fit your app model, which to be honest, unless you're a game, I don't really think it does, to be honest with you. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. Auto renewing subscriptions. Now, subscriptions themselves are probably some of the most complicated logic to put into your application. In fact, there's an entire service called Revenue Cat that streamlines this across iOS, Android, Windows, and other platforms to really make it simple. Now, I don't use Revenue Cat. I've per put in subscriptions and I have an entire podcast that I did with Frank Merge Conflict. Um, it was an hour long talking about subscriptions and how I implemented in my app. And I also have a blog post talking about implementation details that I'll put right down there, uh, which is really, really neat. But auto renewable subscriptions are basically ongoing access to content or services or subscriptions or features in your application. So for example, in the pro mode example of my cadence, my bicycle application, instead of having a non consumable where they just buy a pro mode, I could say, Hey, you can subscribe to pro mode for a low monthly fee. Let's say a dollar a month. You can actually go all the way down to about 49 cents and up to a whole bunch more that they allow you to do inside the app store. The beautiful part here is that once someone subscribes, you get to set the actual limit of how long it's for, whether it's a week, whether it's a month, two months, three months, six months, a year is up to you. Now, based on that length, it does make it quite easy for you to implement it into your application. If it's a year, you don't even have to check it for a full year because it's good for a full year and you unlock, unlock all that functionality in your app. So I think in general, auto renewing subscriptions are great. The only time that they cancel is when they go in and they cancel them. You can also use family sharing too. So if they have multiple devices and some kids and things like that, they can share that subscription, which is super great. Now, of course, once they cancel, you're going to need to remove that functionality, just like a consumable. Once they run out of things, you're going to need to remove that from your application and ask them to go ahead and renew that subscription or do some perks there. All right. Last but not least, non renewing subscriptions. All right. This is pretty much the opposite of auto renewable subscriptions. You may, may have guessed, but non renewing subscriptions are things that sort of run out. They don't renew automatically. And this is when you want to have, um, sort of maybe like a season pass in a game where you're purchasing this, um, item. Um, and then there might be a new season that becomes available that they might subscribe to again. So you have season one, season two, um, and it's there. So again, this doesn't auto renew. They need to purchase a new subscription once it concludes and they can repurchase that subscription over and over again. So really based on your use case, if you think of it's an ongoing happening every month, they're going to continue to do this stuff. Um, then that's where auto renewable is going to come in where non-renewable again, that's going to be something that ends at a specific date or you only want it to go for so long and then they have to buy it again. Um, 
some developers may want to use non-renewable um, subscriptions as an option too to say hey only give me this thing and then stop after 90 days and that's all i really care about now i've never really used non-renewable subscriptions or seen them but this is probably more most similar to fortnite where you have the season pass that you're buying that makes the most logistical sense downsize to subscriptions either it's auto renewable or non-renewing people hate subscriptions there's so many subscriptions in the world you got to be real you know real specific and how you're offering subscriptions the pricing of the subscriptions and make sure they're with you long term one of the big benefits of subscriptions especially auto renewable subscriptions is that if someone subscribes for more than a year the app store will actually give you a little bit more money back after one year of subscription so it's a really big perk if you can keep them and hook them they're there all right now those have been the five different ways of monetizing your application but let's talk about some tips and tricks and combining these things together. All right. Now, one thing that I just talked about was that people sort of hate subscriptions because we have too many of them, right? I have Netflix, Hulu, Disney plus all these things, not sponsors, but, but how many things do I need to subscribe to? I feel like everyone's trying to take a dollar from me. Well, the opposite obviously of subscriptions is to not have a subscription and have just a non-consumable upgrade purchase or better yet offer both options in your application. This is one thing that I'm a big fan of, which is called a buyout. I'm a fan of this because I was introduced to this concept by Plex TV, which is like a TV media hub where they had a lifetime subscription and the lifetime subscription was $50 or you could pay them 50 bucks. I did the math and I said, I think I'm going to use this for more than a year. I'll just give them the 50 bucks now. Now they can change those prices over time. And the idea really is how long do they think people are going to stay subscribed for versus a full buyout? So the ideal scenario is that at some point you may subscribe for six months, say, oh, I'm really going to use this and then buy the update. But you've given someone the ability to try your pro or your subscription um, and pro features of your application for reduced fees instead of having to make that big purchase up front. So I see this a lot in my applications is, Hey, let me try it for, um, a month or two months, and then I'll make a purchase. So having that non-consumable and auto renewing subscription side by side are a great option. Additionally, you may want to offer up some different subscription tiers. For example, have a one month, have a six month and have a one year. And the great part here is that you can offer discounts at every single tier. So at one month, maybe it's, um, you know, $5 a month at six months, instead of it being $30, maybe it's $20 and at a year, instead of being 60, maybe it's 40, something like that. You can sort of sweeten the deal to have them subscribe longer. So that is a great option. All right. Last thing I want to talk about here, besides combining these different things together is introductory offers. Introductory offers are probably one of my favorite features of subscriptions. Uh, this is something that both uh, uh, Apple and Google do and other stores as well. And it enables you to sweeten the deal to get your users into a subscription. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is have a free trial. And sure enough, you can give your users a free trial of just a few days or a full month if you want to. And then the auto renewable subscription will kick in after that time. Now, sometimes that is a little bit tricky because, you know, you you're on the hook on that auto renewable subscription. You don't want to fool your users. So you want to be very transparent there, but there are two other things that you can do for the first time users. These introductory offers can not only be a free trial. It can also be a reduced rate. You can say, Hey, right now you can get one month, um, instead of 99 cents, get it for 49 cents. That's pretty cool. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll give you 49 cents for the next three months if you sign up today. So the first time that they sign up, you can also group it together and say, Hey, instead of subscribing for one month, I'll sweeten the deal and I'll give you 50% off. If you buy all six months up front. the best part about introductory offers is that they're all handled directly in the app store through a very, very simple user interface. And it really helps you sweeten the deal to get more people subscribing to your application. All right, there you have it. That is five ways of monetizing your application, but also mixing and matching those monetization methods together. 
What have you used in your applications? Let me know in the show notes and comments below. I'd really, really love to hear what's worked well, what hasn't. Have you tried out different pricing structures? Uh, for me, I've just been getting further into the world of exploring in-app um, purchases. I have an open source library called the in-app billing plugin for .NET developers that helps streamline this process. And up until now, even though I published that thing for five years, I had never done subscriptions. And now that I'm in the world of subscriptions, they're so unbelievably cool and they give you a lot of unique opportunities to monetize your application. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked any bit of this at all, please give it a thumbs up. I'd super appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Like I said, I also did a full podcast, Merge Conflict, .fm uh, with my buddy Frank. You can go to mergeconflict.fm, listen to Merge Conflict, search Merge Conflict on your podcast application, and listen to the subscription episode and hundreds of back episodes as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.